Hello there folks, my name is Skull Lynch. I'm here to do one more episode of the Skull Journey story. The last time we were here, we had my sister Shuri, and we have a mom over there. This mm -hmm. time we've actually had a few people. We've got my little sister Sarah here, and I've got my grandma here. And we're going to tell the story of when things first started, when symptoms we first noticed. I gotta pick up mom, where did you say those symptoms were? When we first noticed? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mom noticed. I noticed it first, honey, because when we would put you down to walk, you would stagger like you didn't have control of your legs or something. And uh, I kept saying, there's something wrong. He's too awkward. He shouldn't be falling around as much as he is. And the doctors kept saying it was normal. normal. How old was he? Do you remember? You were probably two at the. And I started talking about how much you would fall when you were walking. You were always skinning up your knees and falling. <laughs> so that was the beginning. But then we didn't. He was, what, nine years old probably before we found him? He was 12. 12? He you was, got a better memory than I do. He was 12 when we went to St. Louis. Oh, wow. What okay. was in St. Louis? When I was officially diagnosed. I uh, walked in school medicine in St. Louis. I was 12 years old. I'll go ahead and pick her up on that part. Washington School of Medicine is where we took him in St. Louis. Okay. And that's where they put the big long needles. Oh, yeah. I heard you talking about that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And did electric things with it. And My dad had always joked around saying they'd stick needles this long into me. Well, they were that, well, actually, probably a little bit longer. But he didn't mention the fact they'd be playing electric shocks. <laughs> it hurt. <laughs> but then it was a long time before you were able to control your walking were pretty well for quite a while. And then when you started driving, Jimmy and I worried that you would not be able to get to the brake in time or something. But you did good. He drove until... Well, he drove you around. I remember briefly Scott walking. Like, because I, I have, like, one memory of being in the garage and you were, like, stumbling around the car. But that's all I remember. And then falling through the, the wall downstairs. Well, he used to take you to daycare. Or I remember there being a hole in the wall for a little bit. He took you to daycare. Remember. We just bought that Malibu. Black Malibu that Scott loved. Nobody could eat. You couldn't drink You couldn't water. eat. You couldn't do anything in it. But all the girlfriends could come in and sit in his lap while he was driving. But nobody else. <laughs> and he used to take you to daycare. Oh, that's scary. Yeah, that was scary. <laughs> Until the day that the Malibu went over into the ditch. <laughs> well, one thing too, I take her to daycare. It was a little bit troublesome because that was the same time Sarah realized that learned traffic lanes. She could tell if they were red or if they were green. The only problem was she didn't know which shark liked to look at. <laughs> And she would tend to tell me quite a bit for running red lights. For <laughs> running red lights. Well, Scott's colorblind. How'd you know the difference between green and red? My light was free to go. <laughs> the light crossing, which is a state track light, that Sarah was like, Sky, you just ran a red light. <laughs> but the car went in the ditch. And when I, by the time I got there, Scott was sitting outside the car holding, holding the, the bumper holding the front bumper with this terrible look on his face he was so sad <laughs> i don't remember oh yeah that well, was, was that it did like, yes it did like three thousand i think dollars worth of damage underneath and there wasn't he just a ran scratch off the road. anywhere no on it, it and just he knocked the bumper down. off oh, he, he weird. went down like into a wooded area because you couldn't get the break I think, yeah, it was a, well, there was a, it, it was right. a tea. Bob, we kept with the great idea. 12 rugs already eat all the bats. <laughs> and that rug is getting shoved underneath the brain. I remember oh, what it's I, my fault. You put rugs under the mat? Clearly what did that do? Uh, the rugs have prevented me from getting my foot. I put rugs uh, over the mat yeah, so you can shake the rugs out. And keep the mats clean. Oh. Mm -hmm. I got that from her. Clearly. It's her fault. <laughs> But I haven't been doing it with my car. You haven't? No, and they're all... Well, see, now your mats are dirty. <laughs> <laughs> but now, who had the wreck with the lipstick on the airbag? Was oh, that let's you, Let's talk too? about that. 
He was supposed to be driving, but the airbag had lipstick on it. Now tell me how that works. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what the other guy said he pulled out of the he high school when, when he hit. He said it looked like a clown car. <laughs> Some more stories? Yeah, I guess we tell some stories this time. Let's put it on a tree. <laughs> For a while, me and Bob lived out in San Diego. Shreem, well, actually, Sam lived with us for a while out there. Shreem decided to come visit one day. He watched out the rest of the story, Shreem. I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> Anyways, they were all at the hotel room. Hired a bunch of girls that she worked with. They were at a hotel overlooking the ocean there in San Diego. We just watched the sun go down over the ocean, which was nice to look at. No more than five minutes later, my wonderful bright sister here decides that we should all wake up early so we could watch the sunrise over the same ocean. We tried to explain to her why we couldn't do that. The sun is going to come up. <laughs> Somewhere. Somewhere. You just had the wrong side of the <laughs> San Diego. She meant the mountains, not the ocean. No, when they were in San Diego, when I went out to, there to visit them. Well, when we were in Costa Rica, he told them we had to move them back home just like That's right. That. <laughs> Let's tell that story, Scott. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> These stories all have to relate back to me somehow. <laughs> We had a uh, girl from Costa Rica come and stay with us, Irene, and uh, we were all excited. How old were you at the time? I was a first grade. This is before me. Yeah. Before oh, yeah. Sarah. Way before you. This is pre-Sarah. <laughs> Back in the dark days. And we were all so excited to get her, get this girl to come and stay with us for a couple of months. And Scott was showing her everything going down the road. This is a tree. This is our trees. This is our fields. And look, that's our moon. And she started laughing. She goes, yes, Scott, we have the same moon. <laughs> you didn't think that was that funny, did you? <laughs> that's our moon. <bit> so. <laughs> we didn't have figured that one out yet. Mm -hmm. And then Sarah pushed him around in San Diego when you were in the third grade, I guess. Yeah, third to Last two months of third grade to half of fifth grade. And you were in a manual wheelchair at the time. Yeah, we were, what was it, Old, old Town? Old Town. In yeah, downtown and we San were, um, I, I don't know why it was just you and me, and why I was, why I, would, I don't know why we were left together, but you was. all were somewhere, and we went to, we weren't far. <laughs> we went to, <laughs> I never thought about that part of the story. <laughs> we went to meet you all somewhere, and I, I feel like we were meeting you at like a, I don't even know, but, uh, so we were, we were going across the street, and so I was pushing you, and I think like the light was gonna turn. So we were like, "Oh, let's go!" And so I started running, pushing you, and I, and you dumped right out. And you had Kohana, your service dog, with you, and you dumped right out in the middle of the road. <laughs> and uh, I didn't know what to do because I'm, I'm probably eight or nine, probably nine, uh, and and the, the light turns green, and so cars are honking. And um, so people get out of their car, and I'm like, I don't know what to do. And so people get out of their car and start helping, and I'm kind of just watching, like, not really sure what's going on. And then someone put his shoulder on my, or um, his hand on my shoulder and was like, it's okay, we, we all make mistakes. Or <laughs> and I lost with him. <laughs> I was fine until that, until he said that. Uh, but we got you situated. I, we made it back to Mama Note at some point. You weren't wearing a seatbelt at the time, I guess, were you? Not at that point. No, Not no. at that time. No. No. So then we said, you know, maybe a seatbelt will be handy. Well, then there, that also <laughs> happened in, in New York with you all. Yeah, I dumped him in New York. So I put him on a train track one time. Wait, what? In San Diego. You put him on a train track? I dumped him on the train oh, track. Shoot. Oh, you dumped him too? We both dumped him. Oh, yeah, oh, on, crossing then. the trolley lanes <laughs> in his chair. <laughs> Go over it. Yep. Out he goes. <laughs> It's possible that we had had a few drinks while we were out in downtown San Diego that night, and I dumped him, and 
I was laughing so hard I couldn't get him. We had to get help. Muzzly <laughs> stories do involve a couple of drinks. No, no, they, no they don't. don't. No, they just don't. that one. No. Just when just, it was you and her. Just, just not when I was around. I was a sober nine year old. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, we, I, I dumped place. you on the on the trolley tracks. I got some more. Yeah. I keep picking it. Now you have any more stories, Bob? It does, and um, I don't know. I don't. I've got lots of stories. I just don't know how many I'm allowed to tell. I feel like I'm much better now about like lifting the. I haven't dumped you out since then, so I guess I learned my lesson. No, I haven't dumped him since then. So. Well, you just gotta do it once, and it's. Well, the bad story is when you fell and broke his tooth. That, that was bad. That that was what about the time he that dumped himself? <laughs> so we we yeah. them in there. Yeah, we had was bad. the power wheels. <laughs> I think we told that story about the power yeah. wheels, or I've I've type I've told the story on the parent group about the power yeah. wheels because there was a question on there about someone getting power wheels, and yeah. I'm like, mm, warning, warning, <laughs> yeah, be careful. Well, so, you gotta yeah. share the story. Well, well he had power charging. wheels, and we had gone to a friend's house in San Diego, and Scott wanted to show our friend the uh, how the power wheels work. So you push them a little bit, and then there's settings that you can put on the tires and they'll start rolling on their own with little effort. So he pushed them, and I think the setting was set a little bit too high maybe, and it was, a, and it was going down just a little bit of an incline. Just and those then, little lips though, get you. Yes, so where the, the driveway and the road met was you know down a little bit, and his front wheels caught with those power wheels on and dumped him upside down face first onto the pavement, and the wheelchair's attached to him at this time. The power wheels are probably 30 pounds a piece. That was awful. It was a heavy chair planted upside down on his face. So his face was busted, his tooth was missing, his well, lip was busted. Swollen. Like you still got like a tiny chair. Yeah, it's still a little right swollen. And then uh, <laughs> uh, his nose was Aren't broke. You I cleaned your teeth. <laughs> and uh, Cherie was with us. And, and we were my leaving husband, the next day. And were you with us? Yeah, because we were visit we were visiting at that I point. I think we, we had lived. gone to pack up our stuff in the house, and we were just visiting, or maybe the we, house. We, had we just didn't sold. live there anymore because we were leaving back to go back the next day. Yep. yep. Yeah, you're right. So you're, this, you had this school. Was, you had to go back to school because he was wanting me to stay, and I'm like, I gotta get you. I think back I was to in school. high school at the time or something. Like it. Yeah. No, I went to Franklin. We were, we were living in Indianapolis. At the okay, time. so I was in middle school. Yeah. But but still, we weren't living there, and it was like, well, shoot, you're going to the emergency room. Yeah. Now. So we took him to the emergency room. His clothes were all bloody, and they gave him. He was he was panicking at the time, and I was trying to keep the blood from. I couldn't tell what was broke. There was something up here broke, and I kept a towel over you to keep the pressure. He said, "I can't breathe. I can't breathe." <laughs> so he's pushing me away, and one of the other neighbors was going off the deep end and call 911 and do this. And I said, no, 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 no. I said, a head wound bleeds really bad. Let's just see what's going on. So after we got ourselves together, we put him in the car and took him to the hospital. He broke his tooth, broke his nose. Um, he didn't fracture anything on his face or anything. And then they gave him something to calm him down because in no time he was talking about stuff that didn't even make sense. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I don't remember. He went from one extreme very quickly to he the other. He was talking about like, spaceships or something, wasn't he? I don't oh, know. Like, what? And they come in and they check his blood pressure and they, you know, they're all concerned and he just looks at them. And then they said, are you feeling okay? He says, yep. And he turns around to shrink us. So anyway, <laughs> Like nothing ever happened. Oh. I'm like, ooh, I need some of those drugs. His tooth through his lip. It was. His it tooth was had gotten busted, cut think, his like lip, it. and I think it was stuck in his lip. Yeah. And I'm, oh, there gosh. may be some still in there. We looked. The dentist looked around trying to find it. She goes, I don't feel anything, but it could be something still in his lip. So anyway, though, that was not. That was because so, so. like all the other uh, dumps in the middle of the road were, were not. No, they, they weren't bad. No, we just like, didn't get hurt. It was he bad got the time. That one was like that one was bad. That was really bad. That was scary. Then we all had to leave the next day anyway, leaving there. Ray stayed there because he had a convention. So yeah, Ray checked out a couple of times. Leave. Yeah. Um, but we survived. The, we made it. That was the end. It of wasn't fun, but we made it. I don't remember. I guess that would have been Alex that was with us on that trip because I had one of the boys with me. Yeah, I was with you. We did that duck thing. Didn't Jimmy go with you? Yeah, he went with me once. Yeah. With Logan. Twice, I think just the just one time with Logan. Okay. My yeah, dad was, was when we yeah. lived in San Diego. It's so that was fun. He was fun. <laughs> Let's get a churro. <laughs> oh. He started before we even got to the airport. 
let's get something to eat. <laughs> We're talking about my dad who passed away in 2015, and he loved traveling. So he went to San Diego with me and and Cherie. Well, and we're out he there. Was, it was just me and Logan. Yeah. Logan was we were there at the time. Oh, we were living there? Yeah, but and Papa was diabetic. And so... Yeah, right. one time oh. we went and we stayed at a hotel down yeah. close to his... Oh, that was with Alex. That was, so he must have gone twice oh, then. Okay. Yeah. I have to get pictures out. Like, but he... Mom made him eat right because he was diabetic so the minute he would get out of the house he would he with like, us he said let's go get a churro <laughs> let's go do this eat, let's eat chocolate cake anything <laughs> so i took a picture of him at sea world eating a big old piece of chocolate cake i said i'm sending this back to mom just so you know <laughs> uh, it's funny. Funny. it was fun so anyway we we've had some good try. times i see the story goes we go through a lot of difficult things in life. <laughs> Obviously, a bad by very share. We fall out of chairs, but no matter what, we made you have a good laugh about it later on. We do. We laughed. Right. We had a good laugh yesterday with Snapchat, didn't we? <laughs> if you have any questions or comments, please let us know. And of course, give us a thumbs up and let us know how we liked it. Other than that, I guess I've got to say goodbye for now. Thank you. So if you can elaborate on that. So what now? <laughs> How you uh, first noticed there was something We're going to talk about Scott? when you first noticed something was wrong with Scott, oh. not walking correctly. I'm sorry. Well, let's see. He well, hang on just a minute. <laughs> <laughs> he, she's not Actually, I am filming all this. It's fine. <laughs> he can edit it. <laughs> We're good. We're good. Is this your water? <laughs> yes. You are probably. Okay, so I can go ahead and start this. Well, I've already started it, so you're just going to have to edit it. Oh, yeah, I hear that right now. Yeah. Hello there, my name is Scott Lynch. Welcome to the Ed Family Podcast. Hello, Scott. 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 I'll be more funny. <laughs> <laughs> Just. All right, you go ahead. You don't have to be loud. Okay. Hello there, my name is Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> He's got an audience. He's getting nervous. Back. No pressure. <laughs> Hi, sweetie. Yes, in just a minute. Just a second. All right. <laughs>